picture right about here. Well, good morning. My name is, is Bruce Gallagher, pastor at Crossroads Church here and a long time friend of, of uh, the Vincent family. And uh, it's a privilege for me to be here with you today to honor the life of someone who lived their life so well. And uh, appreciate the, the travel that you've uh, uh, come down for. I'm, I'm thankful it's a beautiful day to be able to share this time together. And uh, to celebrate a life well lived and also to celebrate the fact that we're in this place um, because Leonard served his country well and, uh, and Ivy as well served her country well uh, in helping Leonard and being there for him during the time and the sacrifices of being a part and so we're thankful for her, uh, for her service to her country as well. So we're here to, in these brief few minutes, to be able to remember her life to be able to be grateful for her life and to remember the promise that she is receiving right now. So uh, let's pray as we begin this time again. Uh, Jesus, we are indeed grateful for so many things today. Thank you for the beautiful day you've given us. Thank you for the beautiful life that we are celebrating today. Father, and thank you for the promise that we can claim that uh, your word says that you are near to the brokenhearted for those who grieve most about loss. And Jesus, uh, we're praying for this family today that in uh, realizing this loss, that they would hold dear this memory and your promise to be able to get them through this time. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In terms of remembering Ivy's life, uh, the family put together an amazing document that I'm privileged to read here. You guys did such a great job with this. <clears throat> Iverna Lois Crocker was born on April 8, 1930, in Los Angeles, California, to George and Irma Lister. Iverna, or Ivy, lived a very long and happy life. She spent her last days with family and passed away at 90 years of age on February 3, 2021, at the home of her daughter, Ruth. She lived in Los Angeles until she was married to Leonard Crocker on December 16, 1951. She and Leonard were married for 66 years until he passed away in 2017. Ivy's father passed away when she was one year old. She was an only child living with her mother and grandmother. Because of this, she learned to play games by herself and especially loved her paper dolls and miniature dolls. 
She also loved the beautiful marbles that her uncle would bring her when he visited, not because she played marbles, but because they were so pretty. As a little girl, her mother would sometimes send her to the store on the corner to get a loaf of bread. She loved the fresh bread and couldn't wait to eat it, so she would open the bag on her way home, scooping out the soft inner part of the bread. Many times they would eat sandwiches with holes in the middle of the bread where Ivy had eaten while walking home. <laughs> Evidently, she didn't get in trouble for that. She did not. <laughs> Ivy was a very good student through all the years in school, and her teachers loved her, and she loved them too. She learned secretarial skills in high school, and after graduation, she, wanted, she went on to be a secretary in a local life insurance company. Ruth was always impressed with the speed that she wrote in shorthand, even as she got into her 70s. One of Ivy's special skills was playing piano by ear. She would hear a song or hymn and be able to play it without music. Because of this, she was sought after for playing during church events. She especially loved to play <clears throat> for the children during Sunday school. This is one of Ruth's earliest memories of her. She loved animals, especially dogs and cats. Growing up, she had several cats, but became a dog person because her kids wanted a dog to play with. She also had many other kinds of pets, including ducks. One memory of her that is both painful and humorous is when she got married. The wedding was supposed to be on December 7, 1951, but a few days before, she came down with chicken pox, and the wedding had to be postponed until the 16th. She was so embarrassed that on her grown-up day, she had a childhood disease. Soon after their marriage, Leonard joined the Navy and they moved to San Diego. While Leonard was on tour, Ivy worked as an escrow agent at a land titled Escrow Company. In 1954, Leonard left the Navy and they moved to Long Beach, California, where they continued to live until moving to Vacaville in 2013. Ivy had her first child, Dawn, in 1957, and her second child, Ruth, in 1960. She was a wonderful mother, and Ruth remembers one time when Ivy had lost her voice and was in bed. She was trying to keep the four-year-old Ruth entertained, and she would pretend that her hand was a puppet, which made Ruth laugh. That was the kind of person she was, always trying to make others happy. Don remembers that she always had a smile on her face and would do anything for her kids. Ivy had a good laugh and used it often. Due to financial issues, <clears throat> Ivy had to go back to work in 1970. She was a secretary and bookkeeper <clears throat> excuse me, for Long Beach Amusement Company, which owned Long Beach Pike. She said that several times some very interesting people would come to her office seeking employment at the Pike, making her job very interesting. After the Pike closed, she continued working for their accountant, helping him in doing bookkeeping duties. She retired in 1995, and she and Litter bought a motorhome, which they used to travel the country. Their favorite place to camp was on the Rincon, right by the ocean. They also used it, used it to visit Ruth and her family in Vacaville, and Don and his family in Corvallis, Oregon. Don remembers that while driving on the coast, she would stop at every outlook on the road and spend hours looking at the surf breaking over the rocks. One time, Don had found some pretty shells and put them in the motorhome. They went back later and found an awful smell. Don didn't know that the shells had little animals in them, and the smell came from them. Ivy didn't get upset, but very quietly threw out the shells. Carol remembers Ivy as being the best mother-in-law anyone could ask for and welcoming, welcoming her into the family as her own daughter. <coughs> Caroline loved playing all sorts of games with her grandma at all the times that they went camping together. Crystal remembers that everyone was always laughing when they were with grandma, especially when Crystal would say the word porcupine. Porcupine or porcupine, whatever. As a toddler, Crystal would say it and then giggle. So even in later years, the word porcupine would make everyone laugh. Emily remembers the times that she would help Grandma cook, especially mashed potatoes for Thanksgiving. All three of the Crocker grandchildren remember eating candied almonds with her. I mean, love candied almonds. Kelly and Daniel remember riding in Grandma's motorhome. They would love to lay on the floor and feel the, the movements as it was driving. Ivy was the only babysitter they ever had. Ivy was the best grandma to all her children. She shared her love with each of them equally. 
In 2013, both Leonard and Ivy realized that they were getting too old to use the motorhome and moved to Vacaville to be near Ruth. They moved into a retirement co community and enjoyed making new friends there. Ivy spent a lot of time playing games, Mexican dominoes, Joker, and Canasta, to name a few, teaching her new friends how to play. Because Ivy and Leonard lived in Vacaville, they got to see Ruth's family a lot. Kelly remembers playing games with Grandma. She and Ivy were always a team during games, and they won quite a bit. We all would spend many hours playing games. Kelly and Ivy also shared a love for the Hallmark singing snowmen that came out every year. Ivy loved those cute snowmen. Ivy became a widow in 2017. She missed Leonard terribly, but knew that she would see him in heaven one day. Her faith meant a lot to her. She went to church her entire life until her, until her health kept her home. She lived her faith by helping in missionary groups, children's Sunday school, and church, and always helping behind the scenes at church functions. Ivy's health began to deteriorate. She lost most of her eyesight to macular degeneration, but was always upbeat about it. Her legs and knees began to give out, so much so that in November of 2020, she moved to an assisted living apartment for more help. After two weeks of illness, Verna Lois Crocker went to be with the Lord on February 3rd, 2021. She leaves behind son, Don Crocker, his wife, Carol, and their three daughters, Crystal, Carolyn, and Emily, or Bill, and Bill Adkins. A daughter, Ruth Vincent, and her daughter, Kelly, James Hale, and a son, Daniel Vincent. One great-grandchild, Ellie Adkins, and one great-grandchild on the way, Noah Hale. She will be missed. It's an obvious comment. She will be missed for the life that she lived so well. Um, just personally, I, I was blessed to be able to get to know her. My mother was in the same retirement community as Leonard and Ivy, and for several years when I would go to visit uh, through Ruth, and I met them, and whenever I would come, they would see me lying across the room, and, and, her, and her smile would always light up. Hey, good to see you, you know. She was one of the friendliest people that uh, I, I remember meeting. And uh, so obviously that's the, the person that you're talking about here. And uh, as we talk about her life, one of the joys of a time like this is to celebrate a life that was so well that she invested her gifts and abilities and passions in the right priorities. Loving God and loving people. Thinking about that and, and reading some of your memories uh, about uh, your, your mother and your grandmother, um, I, I'm just thinking in these few minutes here that as family we're sharing these times, I just want to open this up to any of you who would feel like you'd want to share uh, just a thought or a testimony or something to be able to bless uh, your relationship with her. So allow you guys, if you want to say anything about her, please do so at this time. Okay, I don't want to make you nervous or push with that, and I hope that, but I, I would hope that her memory would live on by continuing to tell these stories. This is not the the end of those stories, it's hopefully the beginning of sharing those stories and keeping her memory alive in your own lives. Um, as we talked about the fact that, that she knew the right priorities, loving, loving God and loving people, uh, and, and she knew that because of God's promise to her that she would one day receive the promise that the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave to her. And that promise <clears throat> is so succinctly and clearly put it in uh, Philippians chapter 3, in verse 20 and 21. It says, But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Uh, the, the term there, our lowly bodies, lowly in that they decay that they were ne never meant to be able to, to, to last real long. And we're thankful that Ivy's life 
didn't last a whole long time, that she got to do some of the things that she really enjoyed doing and traveling the country and seeing so many things and being able to be able to, to grow with her grandkids and uh, celebrate life with them. But in the end, even in her life, we're reminded of a lowly body, that things were just falling apart. And in light of that, uh, one more scripture, I love how when Paul puts this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, talking about our lowly bodies. Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be with clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we were in this tent, we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now it is God who made us this very promise and has given the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to become. So we're celebrating the fact that Ivy has already understood what that means to be able to get rid of that lowly body and to receive that, that promise of being in the presence of Jesus Christ. Uh, that's what Paul was, was yearning all of his life, to know what it means to be able to, to live this life and, and to battle the battles of, of, of physical imperfections, to battle this battle of, of spiritual issues that we face every single day, especially in this life in this last year and a half or so, but to be able to get to the end of the battle and to know that her Lord and Savior has said to her, well done. Well done, Ivy. I appreciate the way that you lived your life with the gifts and the, ability that, the abilities that I invested in you. To be able to use your personality, to use your skills, to use your passion to love other people, to give them the best that you have. And that's our example. And, and that's your legacy as a family. To know that, that you had a grandma, to know that you had a mother that knew what it meant to be able to love God and to love people and to use her life in a way to bless others. So this is not a place that we, we, we like to come to. We, we want to choose to be able to do this at this time. But we celebrate a life well lived. We celebrate the fact that she is receiving the reward that was promised to her, and that one day we who believe in Jesus will receive also. So, so in that light, you know, I, I, I've been told that you uh, believe in Jesus Christ as well. To know that we're here together to be able to enjoy that relationship that we have because of Jesus, and to be able to proclaim the promise that we have because of Jesus as well. So this morning, as we kind of wrap up this time together and, um, in a sense, leave the physical reminder that we have of Ivy. We don't leave. We don't leave the memory of the spirit that Jesus entrusted her with that's living on. And, and, and in a real way, she is not here. She is with the Lord who gave her that promise. And so just want to, to, to close the time with, with silent prayer, first of all, that uh, we each could be able to offer up our prayers, giving thanks uh, for her life, for how she touched each of you, and then I'll close with an audible prayer. Jesus, we, uh, we affirm that you are celebrating Ivy's life with you right now. And for that, we thank you. Father, I pray that during this time that you would give uh, added faith to this family as they think about the memory of one they love so well. Jesus, that it would motivate them to live for you in a way that would, uh, that would also please and bless you, Jesus. I pray that her memory would continue to be able to serve and to be a testimony, Father, for you in the days and months and years ahead, Lord. Father, I pray for this family that that has known grief so well, um, 
so intimately over these last few years, Jesus. I, I pray for a regeneration of their spirits, Lord, and their strength. That in these days, Father, that even though we know that we are all, all headed to or towards heaven with you, that for a time, Jesus, they would be allowed to, to make the most of their life here while they have it. We pray that they, there would be a reprieve from um, family members, Jesus, in the, in the months, hopefully years ahead, that they can enjoy each other's relationships and uh, while looking forward to heaven, Father, enjoy what they have together right here on earth right now. Father, we, uh, again, we thank you for Ivy's life. We thank you for giving her strength physically and spiritually to endure to the end. Thank you that we have this promise that she's with you. For we pray this now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This does bring our ceremony to a close out here. Um, thank you all for making the effort to be out here and, and to be with each other. Um, in just the next few moments, the cemetery staff will be coming forward and taking uh, Ivy and t laying her to rest. And the family is welcome to visit the grave after 4 o'clock today and every day after that. Uh, again, thank you for being here.